Alex Castellanos, chief political analyst, Gloria Borger, and Republican strategist Nancy Fotenauer. Alex, to you first, in the sense that I know Republicans have some concerns about the size, the scope, the powers of this agency, but they couldn't defeat it. It passed. It exists. Why give the president a chance? The economic numbers are against him. The statistics are against him. Nobody in America knows who Richard Cordray is. Why give him a chance to come in and say, my guy wants to help you with your mortgage. My guy wants to make sure military families don't get screwed. Republicans are siding with the banks. Well, on occasion in Washington, even Republicans are capable of trying to do the right thing, even if it hurts them politically. And they actually tried to do that on this. Look, you're right. This is an agency that is completely unaccountable. Its powers are fantastic. The guy can't be fired once he's in the job. And you know who funds this thing? The Federal Reserve. They're unaccountable. So this is just layers of unaccountability. But they and, lost and the fight, fight, Nancy. They lost the fight. This was the argument when they were debating Dodd Frank, so the big law that this fighting. is included. So we just we just keep. <laughs> so will. so a, the signing a law into law means nothing. You just keep fighting. Well, is that I mean, I don't think this is t-ball for the guy in the bully pulpit because this is just another four-letter word to most Americans. And there was a lot of education that went on at the time. This horrible piece of legislation Dodd Frank went through. And Alex is exactly right. All the Republicans said. They said we will. Put, we will put this in place, but you need to do something on accountability, make it five people, not one single unelected official, and, and allow it to be appropriate, have their appropriations go through Congress so there's some voter feedback mechanism. I agree with Alex completely on the fact that once this is funded by the Fed, you will never know what's going on. But they lost, okay, okay. I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought the way, I thought my civics, I'm trying to remember back to civics class, uh, the bill becomes a law, after both chambers of Congress pass it, the president signs it, and then the law of the land is you implement what it says. Right. And it says you create this agency, and it used to be, conservatives used to to argue no matter who wins the presidential election the president gets his pick yeah. uh, but my, my, my argument is beyond that all the economic statistics are hard for this president so why give him a chance it's the old Axelrod argument that is it a referendum or a choice Look, if it's a referendum on his record he probably loses because of the numbers fairly or unfairly Gloria but this allows him to go in and say this is Absolutely. a choice I'm fighting and, and for don't you forget this is the president who was criticized for bailing out Wall Street now he gets to be on the side of the consumers against Big Bad Wall Street. They're not looking at the niceties of the bill at this point. As John points out, it's already law, okay? You want to change the law, then there's an election coming up. But, but at you know this what point, this does, though? It's wait a minute, but at this point... <laughs> you're do, you're double teamed. Point, if, if you haven't you noticed, you're double teamed. <laughs> he's got Wall Street. I'll hold her. He's, no, no, but at this point, at, at this point but, he's taking on Wall Street, but, and he wants a payroll tax cut for the middle class. This, 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 this does not help consumers. In fact, it will raise the prices of goods and services but, that they want. It also puts Big Brother... So let that happen right and say, I told you so. Things like credit card. Let that happen and but run, run against the president. But I think isn't it... It's their job it. to right. try to improve outcomes for the American right. people. I believe it is. You can still run against him, and you know how? Right. This president really has a the, the most flip-flops of any candidate running in the Republican or Democratic side. He's the guy who's taken more Wall Street money than anybody. He's okay. appointed all of Wall Street to his administration. Now he says he's Tim for Geiger. consumers. Well, same guy, same I think, president. I think, I think you're proving my point. Then why, let him, go in, then why let him go in and make this argument? All right, you talked about improved outcomes. I want to shift the discussion to some improved outcomes for Newt Gingrich. One of Mitt, even as Newt Gingrich has surged in the Republican polls, one of Mitt Romney's better arguments maybe hasn't made it right, but it's been, look, at least I'm the more competitive general election candidate. Look at the polls next year. I'm stronger against Barack Obama. Look at these just in recent days. Quinnipiac poll, Ohio, one of the most important states in the country. Gingrich 43, Obama 42. So that's a dead heat. That's a tie, but Gingrich has been behind if you look in the past. Let's move on to Florida. Obama 46, Gingrich 44. Again, slight advantage presidents, but that's a tie. Margin of error right there. The one state where Gingrich is way behind is an important state Republicans would love to grab back. Pennsylvania, Obama 48, Gingrich Gingrich 40. But in terms of the electability argument, that was one of the biggest drags on Newt. If right. you look at these numbers now, boy, he can puff up a little more, I guess. Well, and uh, as we all know, it's, it's an entire political lifetime between now and when those votes would be cast. I would point out, though, and I think this is why you see that Republicans, and I do believe independents, too, will come behind whoever the Republican nominee is, because they would rather have somebody who's right some of the time than the guy in the office who's been wrong all of the time. I'm so that's it, that, that would be a 
That would be a fascinating <laughs> question. Would the independent voters who had a bad taste for everybody, including Newt Gingrich after impeachment, come back to Newt Gingrich? Or is that long and forgotten? Well, it, I think it depends on which Newt Gingrich shows up or <laughs> continues to be to be uh, here. I mean, because the Newt Gingrich that we've been seeing for the last couple of days, he's been attacked by people like Ron Paul, Mitt Romney's surrogates. He's been very cool uh, right. under the attack. He's been smiling. He hasn't been expansive. He's stuck to a message. He's met with conservative. <laughs> I mean, this isn't but the Newt Gingrich new. that I covered. <laughs> what? But he's new. Well, that's there's the other this, side, right? There's this, there's this scary political element in Washington that all Republicans are now scared of. It's Newtonium. <laughs> and <laughs> Republicans are afraid that if Newtonium uh, uh, is on the ballot, the oh. it'll poison Did, did the Iranians have that in centrifuges? <laughs> well, any any time, any time an election has been about Newt Gingrich, remember, this is the fellow that wow. Bill Clinton ran against yes. uh, and built the Clinton presidency on this. So uh, I think Republicans, let's not count Newt Gingrich, anoint him just yet as the nominee. No. Now, no. it looks like he's got a very strong hand right now. All he's got to do is get through two weeks. Christmas uh, freezes the race. Uh, Next thing you know, he soars out of it, Iowa it into New Hampshire. It's it's right. But it's going to be a long spring. Of all, of all the anybody but Romney candidates, Newt